Okay, so today we're going to have a look at these two things which are called oxidising agents and reducing agents. But there's a warning here and it can get quite confusing um, about what's happening. So I would just kind of take a wee step back to kind of understand what's happening. Basically, an oxidising agent is something that accepts electrons, okay? So in a reduction reaction, right, that is when you have something gaining electrons. Um, so what actually happens is an oxidising agent is something that is reduced itself. And when it's reduced, because redox happens and the oxidation and reduction happens at the same time, then that means it must oxidise something else for this thing to be able to be reduced. Um, so I think it's just about not getting confused between the two, but also thinking, right, okay, if it's reduced itself, then it must be oxidising something else. And an agent is just like a kind of word for something that does something. So if you can imagine like an FBI agent, they do the work of the FBI. A reducing agent then is something that donates electrons or gives electrons away or loses electrons. That means it must be oxidised. So what I would actually do is I would actually kind of use those to kind of put them together. So oxidising agent must be reduced and a reducing agent must be oxidised. And I think it's just about thinking about them together um, and it's the opposite of what it says it's doing. So if it's an oxidising agent, then itself has been reduced because it's oxidising something else. If it's a reducing agent, then it's been oxidised because it's reducing something else. And I think it's just thinking about those two and trying not to get confused. So I think at this point, if you need to stop or pause or slow down just to try and get your head around what's happening there, that's fine. But I'll explain it as we go along. Basically, I'm going to show you the kind of two um, different types and where you might find them. Basically, elements that are going to have high electronegativities, and we remember doing this in Unit 1, um, those are going to be... Um, like group 7, uh, specifically fluorine uh, has the most, uh, well, the strongest electronegativity um, in the whole periodic table. So those are the ones that are going to want to pull electrons towards them um, and then so they're going to be wanting to gain electrons. So because they're reduced, because they really want to gain those electrons, they're going to be some of the strongest oxidising agents um, and I think that does make sense. Um, what you'll find out later is that actually that group 7 are actually really good oxidising agents um, and you'll be able to find that out. They're used for things like bleaches and things uh, and disinfectants and that is because what you'll find out is that oxidising agents are really good at disinfecting and bleaching things. On the other hand, we've got elements with low electronegativities so we know that some of the elements with the lowest electronegativities are the group 1 metals, specifically towards the bottom of the group 1 metals. Uh, that's because they're very, very, very easily oxidised because the electronegativities are so low that those electrons just kind of fall off rather than have to be kind of forced off, um, maybe for like some of the other metals. Um, so they are really, really, really good reducing agents. So I would just take a note of the fact that group 7, really good oxidising agents, um, and group one, really good ox a uh, really good reducing agents, and I think just maybe make a note of that because that's quite important. Um, so you can see that non metals are pretty; they tend to be oxidizing agents, and that metals tend to be a uh, reducing agents. And that is because the fact that the metals become ions by losing electrons, so they obviously are oxidized. So that makes them a reducing agent and non-metals tend to gain electrons, so they're reduced, so they're called oxidising agents. So I think it's just kind of making a note of this, and that actually should help you get your head around which one's an oxidising agent and which one's a reducing agent. Now this is what we need to see, um, and this is what I was kind of hinting at um, the other day, and this is redox in the electrochemical series. Um, basically, with what we just had in mind, the fact that uh, the group 1 metals are going to be really strong oxidising agents and the non-metals um, are going to be really good reducing. Sorry, I've turned the wrong way around. Uh, non-metals are going to be really good oxidising agents and metals are going to be really good reducing agents, specifically group 1. 
that means that we can actually build a picture of what's happening. So if you think back to National 5, if you were doing the electrochemical series, you found that the metal that was higher up in the electrochemical series um, was going to be the one where the electrons would flow from. And that is because that's going to be what, the one that's going to do the oxidation reaction. Uh, these are all written um, as redu the, reduc uh, the reduction reaction. If you go to your data booklet, which I've put here, um, this is just the same as what we've got in this wee box. Um, but these are all reduction reactions. If you look at them, that means they're gaining electrons. Um, but we know that the metals, the electrons always flow from the higher up metal in the electrochemical series to one that's lower down. That means the, the higher up metal is losing electrons, so it's doing an oxidation reaction, and the one that's lower down um, does the oxidation, uh, the, re the reduction reaction, so it gains those electrons. But what I'm going to pick out to you here is that what I want you to do is, because of what we've just talked about, uh, what we'll find out is that the higher up you go in the electrochemical series, the more powerful reducing agent um, and we're going to write that equation backwards because these are all reduction uh, reactions and we know that if it's going to be a reducing agent then it's going to be an oxidation reaction so that's why we would write that backwards obviously in the middle we've got this hydrogen reference that's just um, something that basically in a wee bit more kind of complicated they basically based um, whether metals would be oxidizing agents or better uh, reducing agents based on how they would react with a hydrogen a uh, with hydrogen gas and a kind of special electrode and um, that is more advanced higher we're not going to look at that um but just that is there as a kind of reference and, and it's based on well actually it's the voltage that the metals would produce compared to that a uh, hydrogen electrode but we don't have to worry about this all we're saying is that if you basically take that as the middle the ones below that tend to be better oxidizing agents and the ones above it tend to be better reducing agents and you have to write that equation backwards. Uh, if you look at these two equations here as well, magnesium and silver, magnesium is higher up the electrochemical series so it's going to be the reducing agent um, and I think obviously from that you would have to write the equation backwards uh, and you would keep the silver the same. So I think basically from this you should be able to see Right, if they give us any two metals, we should be able to say which one's going to be the better reducing agent, which one's going to be the better oxidizing agent. You'll be able to say which one is the reducing agent because it's going to be the one that's oxidized. And you'll also be able to say which one's the oxidizing agent because that's going to be reduced. And I think just kind of going from there. Hopefully there's not too much talking going on here. Um, but what I would do is I would actually kind of make a note on your data booklet about what I'm going to show you just now. So if you take your data booklet, I would like you to add this in. So we've got this hydrogen, right? So I would like a kind of line on each side and I would just write hydrogen reference. And we're kind of taking that as the middle of the electrochemical series in terms of a the voltages that it would produce um, but these are called half voltages and um, this is all advanced higher so you don't have to worry about it what i would show you as well is that if you look to the bottom of this here you can see fluorine and i told you before that that was obviously the most electronegative element and that also means it's the strongest uh, oxidizing agent and, and we said that the best ones were at the bottom of the electrochemical series if you look to the top, we've got lithium, uh, and that happens to be the best uh, reducing agent as well. Uh, so I think it's just having a look at these. Obviously, the one at the bottom is group 7, most electronegative. Uh, the one at the top, lithium, that's least electronegative, and that's why they are uh, these kind of... Um, that's why we, that they're where they are on the electrochemical series, and that's why they're either the strongest oxidizing agent for fluorine and the strongest reducing agent for uh, lithium. And they're all group one and seven. What I would say is, whoops, I would go in here and I would kind of write a more powerful
reducing agent and they are oxidized so you want to write backwards So lithium then would become this. It would start off as the metal um, and it would lose its electrons. Down here, these are more powerful oxidizing agents. reduced and then you'd write them as this also my teacher told me back uh, when I was doing high chemistry that there's this thing um, you could imagine it like kind of going anti-clockwise um, so if you've got your reaction happening here then obviously it's going to go the other way um, and obviously that's going to happen the more you go up they're going to be more powerful um, and then when you go to the bottom then that if you can imagine an anti-clockwise if you're at the top then you're going obviously the other way and then if you're somewhere at the bottom if you're doing the oxidation or oxidizing the agent then that's going to go the the way it's written um, so I don't know if that helps, but it might be handy just to kind of think about it going anti-clockwise. The ones at the top are going to have to be flipped um, to kind of go that anti-clockwise direction. And then the ones at the bottom uh, just are written the same way. But I think the most important thing out here is to pick out the middle as being the hydrogen reference for that hydrogen reaction. Uh, and then the ones above it, obviously we're writing backwards. They're the most powerful reducing agent. Um, because they themselves are oxidized and if they're oxidized then that reaction has to be backwards and because it's written as in the electrochemical series as a reduction um, and at the bottom um, they're more oxidizing agents uh, so they themselves are reduced so you can just keep them the same so hopefully that makes sense um, I again maybe would pause and go back through a few times just to get your head around that because there's quite a lot of stuff going on here um, but once you do kind of get what is happening, then it does make it a wee bit more uh, simple, just once, once it clicks. So we're going to do a few wee questions just now. And from a redox reaction, you should be able to identify spectator ions if present. So be able to strip those away. Um, you should be able to write the half equations for reduction and oxidation. And also the reducing, so be able to identify the reducing and oxidizing agents. So I'm going to go through an example with you um, and then there's some more to try uh, and I kind of add on. And... Okay, so let's have a wee look example um, to basically do those steps in a redox reaction. So with this wee reaction here, um, aluminium and iron oxide, and basically we need to try and work out um, which one's been oxidised, which one's been reduced, um, to write those equations out. And then also to be able to see which one's oxidizing agent and which one's the reducing agent. So which one's the oxidation reaction, which one's the reduction reaction. It's quite hard to see from this. So what would be handy is if we maybe didn't have this oxygen and this oxygen. And I'm going to explain how we can work this out. So if we take away what's called the spectator ions, um, we can rewrite this equation. Now... The oxygen is present on both sides, which suggests that it's an, a spectator ion. And if we can now use our wee, um, kind of to work out the charge on each ion um, from National 5, we should be able to do this quite easily. A oxygen has a charge of 2 minus, and there's 3 of them, so that's going to be a 6 minus charge. This one must mean that Fe2 has a charge of 6 plus. So Fe must have a charge of th 3 plus. Same thing here. Oxygen has a charge of 6 minus because there's 3 of them. Uh, that must mean our Al2 has a charge of 6 plus. 
So AL has to have a charge of 3 plus. So we can rewrite this without any spectator ions. So that would be 2AL plus Fe 3 plus. Obviously, because there was Fe2, then we have to put a 2 moles in front of that. We've got 2 moles of Fe3 plus ions in there. And just because we had the two of them in that uh, kind of equation or a uh, chemical formula, then we'll do the same here. It's going to be 2 Al3 plus again, 2 because you've got 2 lots of Al, and then that's Fe. So, what we can do now, oops, I'm just going back out, is we can pair up the substances from each side of the equation. So let's do the Al first. We start with Al and then we become Al3+. Obviously because I've got a 2 on each side, that should also be a 2 I think. Because we've got a 2 on each side, we don't we don't actually have to write that because it would just cancel out. So I mean we could do 2Al, 2Al3+, they would just cancel out. So you're left with Al to Al3+. Um, and last but not least, uh, we'll do the iron. So that becomes, that's Fe3 plus, going to Fe, and again they had a 2 mole to 2 mole, and what we'll do is we'll just kind of cancel them out, so that's fine. Then let, let's rewrite this, but showing all the electrons and making sure it's nice and balanced. Okay, so, let's do this just now. So that would be Al, going to Al3 plus. And obviously if that's going to Al3+, plus, then it must be plus the electrons cancel the, to make it neutral, because it's neutral on the other side. And let's do the same here. So we'll get the Fe3+, plus going to Fe. Obviously this side here is missing three electrons, so we'll add them in. And that is our oxidation and reduction reactions happening there as well. Now what we need to do is we need to look at this reaction as well. It's the same one. I'm asking which one is the reducing agent and which one is the oxidising agent. Well, let's look back to our equations here. And then obviously, the Al is being oxidised, so this must be the reducing agent. Because it is allowing, uh, because it's being oxidised itself. The Fe3 plus is being reduced which means that, that must be the oxidising reagent. And basically we're just looking at what's been oxidised, what's been reduced. If it's been oxidised, it must be the reducing agent. If it's been redu reduced, it must be the oxidising reagent. And I think it's just getting your head around that, although it seems quite difficult. Let's try another one just to make sure that we're getting this okay. Put zinc, copper sulfate, copper and zinc sulfate. So if you look at the data booklet, SO4 to minus is the ion for sulfate, which means that copper must be a wee two plus and so must the zinc. So let's write this without the spectator ions. Let's write this showing each one and we'll, we'll get to the oxidation and reduction reactions. So it's Zn to Zn2 plus. Obviously we can finish that off quite nicely by just adding the two electrons in there just to make sure that that's balanced. On this side it's neutral, so this side must be neutral on the end. So we've had to add those two electrons. Let's start with copper 2 plus, going to copper. Obviously we're missing two electrons in here um, to make it neutral, so we'll do that plus two electrons, there we go. So if we look at these reactions you can see that the zinc is losing its electrons, so that's oxidizing reagent, or oxidation. And then this one is reduction. That means that zinc is the reducing agent. because it itself has been oxidised 
and it also means that Cu2 plus is going to be the oxidizing reagent. Okay, so we've got a few more to try in this PowerPoint. I'll leave these up. You can give these a go. Um, and then there's also some questions for you to try as well um, in the assignment. So I would give them a go. Um, I'll go through these and I'll make it so that you can easily pause at it. Um, and then I would do the questions in the assignment. And if you've got any questions at all, um, then maybe go back. You watch the video, hopefully it makes sense. And then I would maybe ask your teacher. Okay, so here's the first one. Again, write this without the spectator ions. Go through making sure you've got the same things on each side. So you would do the lithiums first on each side, and then you would do the uh, the hydrogens on each side. And then you would kind of work out your equations, and then you would work out which ones are reducing and which ones are oxidizing agents. And then this is the last one. Okay, so. Please get in touch if you need a wee hand at all.